Welcome. Glad you are joining us as we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the third Sunday in Lent, and our opening hymn with Mikey is In the Hour of Trial. Take it away, Mike. Thank you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Here in the season of Lent, we also use the cure, which is Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Holy God, through your Son Jesus, your love has called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace. Teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First lesson comes from Exodus chapter 20. The Israelites have made it away from the Pharaoh, have escaped into freedom. And God speaks these words. Exodus chapter 20, beginning at verse 1. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of slavery you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me but showing steadfast love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. For the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day. To the Lord your God, shall do, you shall not do any work. You, your son, your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Here ends the first lesson. The psalm is in Psalm 19. 
The refrain is, the commandment of the Lord gives light to the eyes. The heavens declare the glory of God. The sky proclaims its maker's home handiwork. One day tells its tale to another. One night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, their message to the ends of the earth, where God has pitched a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the outermost edge of the heavens, runs about it to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The commandment of the Lord gives light to the eyes. The teaching of the Lord is perfect, revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Mm -hmm. More to be desired are they than gold. Much more than fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. The commandment of the Lord gives light to the eyes. By them also is your servant enlightened. In keeping them, there is great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The commandment of the Lord gives light to the eyes. Our epistle lesson comes from Paul's, St. Paul's first letter to the people in Corinth. This is near the introduction. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Hasn't God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of the world, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, Greeks demand wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews, foolishness to Gentiles, to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. God's strength is stronger than human strength. Here ends the reading of the Epistle lesson. Our Lenten verses return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Well, the gospel for this, the third Sunday in Lent, comes from the second chapter of St. John, beginning at the 13th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near. Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, doves, Money changers sitting at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple. The sheep, the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their temple tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered what was written. 
Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered, Destroy this temple. In three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years. And you will raise it up in three days? But Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from, this de from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they had believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. Here ends the reading of the gospel. Praise to you, O Christ. Sort of one of three things come to mind in our lessons today for me. And since this is the season of Lent, I tend to think that Lenten or any church season, and there's Advent, getting ready for Jesus. There's Epiphany, the wise person seeking to find Jesus, this babe of Bethlehem. Lent, a time of getting rid of the junk in our lives so that we're ready to receive the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and his crowning moment which is crucifixion, that each season has a major story to tell. The story that we get, one is preparing for Jesus's death. But there's another one that we looked at the last two weeks that I find still going on this week. If two weeks ago, which was that baptism of Jesus and Jesus being pushed into the wilderness, led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit, is that sense that Lent is partially the discovering of yourself, who you are, what tempts you, what drives you, what's the thing you think of as the most precious in your life? And of course, we simply say the most precious must be God must be God who comes down to love us, to die for us, to take away our sins. And last week was this most evident example of that when Peter, who has just confessed Jesus as the Messiah, hears that Jesus says he must be crucified and die. And the gospel last week was that Peter then began to rebuke Jesus, and Jesus' response was, get behind me, Satan. How does that fit in with the theme? Because Peter, who represents the church, if he can be misdirected, can't all of us? What's your reason for following Jesus? Because he'll give you what you want. And now he's saying, no, take up the cross, die. You see, again, this season is the exploration of who are you? What is the most important thing to your heart and life and mind? Is it God? Is it doing God's will? And this week it continues. It even continues by people who are in the temple doing temple work, helping make money for the temple, because having a big successful temple, isn't that what religion is all about? And Jesus drives them out? But that's that other thing. Again, why are you in the temple? When Jesus is simply saying the temple is a house of prayer. Are you looking for the temple to be a place to give you reward? For you to have power and money and be efficient and people look at you and go, oh, he works in the temple, isn't he wonderful? The Lord, the Savior, drives them out with a whip made of cords. I mean, doesn't that cause us as Christians, as spiritual people, to simply say, what is my life about? What is my religion about? Am I here to keep the religion going? Or am I here to lead folks to Christ? Ah. But then, of course, is that major one which Jesus is talking about. Do you want signs? St. Paul said, Jews want signs. 
People want miracles, right? Isn't that what would get folks to come to church? Some big miracle, as opposed to, no, this is where I need to be. There is no other God before him. There is no way to make an idol or something that would force God to be here to be my lucky charm. And that there's a consecrated day, a Sabbath, by which we let the world go to the side and we spend the day communing with God. Isn't that where your heart is? Or are these other things of the world pressing down on us so they become as important as the Sabbath day? And the temple is a representation of the Sabbath. And Jesus' body is the temple. Do you reside with Christ? Do you take his body and blood? Have you been coming to church? Well, there's the COVID thing. And no one at the church is I'm down with that. Maybe God would protect us. Maybe he would fulfill his word. I'm not asking you to do dangerous things. But where is your heart? It's a challenging thing this Lenten season to say, what is important to me in this wilderness of life? Am I listening to the world? Does Jesus have to say to me, get behind me, Satan? Are we driving and making money? Or is Jesus going to throw us out of the temple because we're not joining ourselves to the true temple, his body and blood, his word made manifest in our lives? If you're bored by now with this sermon, there's lots of ideas to it. And I usually find that idea sermons don't go very far, because they're hard to get a handle on. But I just have to say it this way. Who are you? And where is God leading you? Do you find your strength in Christ? So only after he rose from the dead, the, then did the disciples remember, ah, he was talking about his body. Again, is Jesus the center of our lives? Is the foolishness of God greater than the wisdom of this world? It's amazing how we look at the wisdom of the world as saying that's the important thing. When I'm here simply to say the most important thing in all the world is God, the creator. The one who sets the heavens and the stars and the earth and life. And he sets laws so that we don't destroy ourselves or others. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it home. The church is meant for your soul, which is eternal. Which God showed he loved by dying to save it. Amen. Well. Let us sing and rejoice another hymn, which is, O oh, Jesus, Joy. So, oh, Mikey again, he will lead us in a hymn. Thank you, Mikey. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In God's grace, he invites us to give our problems and needs to him. So it's always a blessing to come to God in prayer. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all who are in need. There is no God before you. Purify the faith of your church, that your people place their trust in nothing beside you. Your name is holy. Guide your church that in every situation, your people's words and actions honor your name. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The heavens declare your glory. Renew your creation. Provide leaders in the struggle for clean air and water. Protect creatures and crops that rely on healthy ecosystems. Give all people the willingness to repent when our way of life pollutes the earth and skies. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Your foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. The leaders with the foolishness of your peace and mercy. Your law depends on vulnerable, defends the vulnerable. Work through the legislators, judicial systems, systems of law enforcement to protect the well-being and freedom of all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your weakness is stronger than human strength. Protect those who are vulnerable. Give courage to all who are suffering. Defend victims of crime. Bring redemption to those who have harmed others. Give Sabbath rest to those who labor. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You call us to proclaim Christ crucified. Give clarity to this congregation and our leaders so that we might follow Christ beyond our own habits and comfort. Clear out anything in our common life that would obscure the gospel or that serves our own interests. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Bring your blessing on young little Hadley Varner as she celebrates her birthday this week. Strengthen her. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We uplift all those of the congregation and our friends who are ill, who we name in our hearts before you. Bring them your healing, comfort, and strength. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. The cross of Christ is your power for all who are being saved. Thank you, Lord, for Petua, Felicity, and all the martyrs whose witness reveals the power of the cross. Give us the same trust in life and in death. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his smile upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we close with, in the cross of Christ, I glory. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Heather. And thank all of you for listening in. Hope this has upbuilt you in Christ Jesus. Until next week, the Lord be with you. Goodbye for now.